Hello and welcome back to Amina Diary Room. On our last episode, we got to discover how um, policy and regulatory challenges affect the construction industry in Kenya. As for today, we are going to understand how skilled labor and technology play a vital role in the construction industry here in Kenya. With me today is a guest and I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you, Penina. My name is Brian Kagondu. I'm a consultant uh, working in the firm. My area of specialty is the construction sector overseeing East Africa. And it's a pleasure to be here today. So, contrary to popular belief, Kenya has skilled labor. In fact, some of our construction experts work in various international firms above and beyond Africa and all the other continents. Even the semi-skilled labor force have found themselves in different countries. For example, in Jersey Island, which was a colonial state of the British, we have a lot of Kenyan workers who actually work on the different project sites that are located there. So maybe the main challenge that we could say from that standpoint would be that we do not have enough personnel. And uh, this has been attributed to many factors. One, it's been uh, the lack of projects in some. We've also seen a scenario whereby the wages that are earned are not always the most favorable in some of these particular projects. So I would say that uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are definitely seeing different innovations coming about which are leading to faster construction times. For example, we have the use of precast technology which basically hastens and almost reduces the construction of buildings by almost half the speed using conventional means. Uh, we are also seeing the adoption of uh, different types of cement mixes which can be able to also fast track the construction of uh, different elements. For example, in, during dam construction, you'd find that the cement that's used is able to uh, cure much faster because of the different admixtures that are added during its construction. So different technological advances have been realized, different machineries have been developed, and this is leading to a lot of improvement, both in terms of quality, uh, both in terms of time, and also in terms of costs, and ensuring that projects are delivered on time and on budget. And I'd like to ask, are there um, any environmental or sustainability challenges that um, construction projects need to address and how can the industry um, work towards more sustainable practices? Yes, um, I think the first thing we have to appreciate is we have one home called planet Earth. So we cannot destroy our mother's house nonetheless. And so yes, there have been advances on the elements of and the aspects of sustainability. We have seen more ecologically friendlier materials being produced in the, in the market, recyclable materials. We have seen even the adoption of uh, plastic waste being remolded to different items that can be used. For example, we have uh, plastic waste being molten and being used to make uh, ceiling boards for houses, okay? We also have the production of what we call laminates placed on floors mm -hmm. that are decomposable over time. And with all these different dynamics, we have seen a greener and more eco-friendly uh, building mm -hmm. being developed in the process. And what is happening now is there is a lot of compliance also being followed through. We have what we call the edge certifications, okay, which are basically standard regulations applied worldwide, uh, affected by different bodies. Each country has some form of a, like a charter or a chapter that oversees its implementation in the countries. And these different bodies are now governing the process by which uh, companies, industries, homes, projects basically can be certified to be edge compliant which means they are green, they are eco-friendly and their eventual usage does not lead to the harmful degradation of the environment. Mm -hmm. In the cases where we even have factories you will find that um, we are having systems that are able to treat the effluents that come out of them. In the cases where you have rundown machinery 
there are now solutions that are being developed to see how these materials can be reused later in future. So I would safely say that there are better practices being applied to ensure that we protect this one home, this beautiful planet of ours called Earth. Thank you so much, Brian, for that. And also, stay tuned on our next episode where we are going to focus on procurement, um, supply chain disruptions, and material sourcing.